the world of his medal. And as the officials were making their announcements, CTV cameras were tracking Johnson at the airport in Seoul as he prepared to leave the country. And what a chaotic scene it was. We have several reports. First, Jim Munson at the Olympic site. There was a sense of urgency at IOC headquarters. The first news was that a Canadian athlete had tested positive for an illegal drug. It took two days to analyze a urine sample. The International Olympic Committee then announced that Ben Johnson had used an illegal substance, anabolic steroids, a drug which can turn fat tissue into muscle. The urine sample of Ben Johnson, Canada, Athletics 100 meter, collected on Saturday, 24 September 1988, was found to contain the metabolites of a banned substance, namely stanozolol. It's an anabolic steroid. The IOC Medical Commission discussed all arguments presented by the Canadian delegation, especially the statement that the sub substance in question might have been administered after the competition by a third party. The steroid profile, however, is not consistent with such a claim. Of course, the gold medal has been withdrawn by the IOC. Do you deny it? Does Ben deny it? Yes. Do you? Yes. This episode has been described as a blow to the Olympic Games and the Olympic movement. But an American IOC vice president says the decision shows the IOC means business. But it's incredibly important for the Olympic movement that action is being taken to show that we are serious about eradicating drug use from the Olympic movement, that we're serious about making sure that the athletes who compete here are indeed the finest athletes in the world and not the finest uh, medical uh, uh, experiments. When Ben Johnson arrived in Seoul, he was treated as a sports hero. The Olympic gold medal only enhanced his superstar status. Now the Olympic movement is stunned by this news. In fact, at the Olympic Village, the athletes still don't want to believe it. Jim Munson, CTV News, Seoul. This report. As far as I'm concerned, Ben is not guilty. Ben Johnson's family is in a state of shock. They've heard the news officially, but they still don't believe Johnson took any kind of drug to win his gold medal. If you could cut him into a million pieces and test him over again, my brother is not on drugs. At York University, where Johnson trains, his teammates also refused to believe the initial reports that Johnson had taken steroids. These young runners, who dream of making it to the Olympics themselves one day, consider Ben Johnson their hero. He's a hard worker. From what I see, the way he trains hard, he, he's the most dedicated guy around here. You know, I think hard work got him there. I, I don't believe any of this. He knows, you know, that they test you for this. So why would he ruin a chance like that, you know, to do steroids? Because he, uh, he'd probably know that they'd find out, and that would just lose his title. But Canadians who don't know Johnson personally were less forgiving. I believe that Ben Johnson, he's uh, embarrassing the Canadians because we were so proud of him. All of our ethnic community here was proud of him, and he made us ashamed now. I think it's too bad for our country that something like that has to happen, you know. Watching the race, so much energy went through me just being Canadian and, and seeing somebody uh, win such a race of such uh, uh, domination. I just think that he sort of blew it, and if, you know, he shouldn't have got caught in the first place. And, but he shouldn't have been doing it in the first place. I mean, he really blew it for us. Canada made such a big thing about his winning. And in Ottawa, the federal government expressed its embarrassment, noting that Canada has played a leading role in the effort to keep drugs out of Olympic well, sports. A couple of days ago, Canada had the opportunity of, of uh, having a, a day of great national pride. And from that time until today, I guess we're now experiencing a, a few moments of, of national embarrassment. Metro Toronto and the city of Scarborough were planning massive celebrations for Ben Johnson when he came home from Seoul with his gold medal. But those celebrations will undoubtedly be cancelled now that our national hero is coming home in disgrace. Patty Corby, CTV News, Toronto. Ben Johnson arrived in the afternoon from what seemed like a shopping spree. The crowd of children gave him a thunderous welcome. 
Not so happy with the entourage was Ben's sister, who kicked the camera of an Italian television crew. I see Ben very quiet, very calm, and a good mood. I don't understand why his sister was so nervous. By late afternoon, the gifts and the gimmicks continued. These crafty entrepreneurs set up shop with Ben Johnson t-shirts just down the street. Don't you think it's a little tacky selling this on Ben Street? Well, uh, we just wanted to bring the product where we think it's, the demand is going to be the highest. A shipment of four huge stereo speakers were also delivered to the Johnson home. Oh, I don't know. He ordered them a long time ago. Come on, talk to us, Ben! Ben Johnson looked on in the doorway of his house, but never spoke. This instance, Ben has been already convicted. But Johnson's new lawyer did talk. He told reporters a federal inquiry must be held soon to prove Ben's innocence. Tonight, Johnson arrived at Toronto's Ryerson Theatre, where he accepted an award at a black achievement ceremony. Ben Johnson has been told not to speak to anyone, including the media. His new group of advisors will now do all the talking. But perhaps Ben's code of silence will be broken tomorrow, when his father arrives from Jamaica. Kath Rusi, CBC News, Toronto. is not directly involved with the testing program. The program is conducted by the Fitness and Amateur Sport Directorate of the Government of Canada, which provides the financing for it. It's undertaken through the direction and leadership of the Sports Medicine Council of Canada and with the cooperation of the individual amateur sport organizations. Uh, maybe track and field could give you a better answer to why certain athletes were or others weren't, but I don't know the specifics of that one. Lori remain unanswered. Was he doped without his knowledge? What role did his handlers play? Should Canadian sports officials share the blame? We have a series of reports, starting with his sad, lonely journey home. In Toronto, a mob scene with reporters, fans, and the curious crowding into the airport, trying to get near the defrocked Olympic champion. Questions were shouted. <laughs> But Johnson and his mother, using a wedge of RCMP officers, plowed through the horde of reporters, staring ahead, not answering. In the pushing and pulling, reporters and photographers were knocked to the ground, but there were no reports of serious injury. Earlier, there had been similar scenes at the airports in Seoul, and during a stopover and plane change in New York. Johnson was seen crying on his sister's shoulder during the New York stopover. The federal opposition in Ottawa today called for the resignation of Canada's sports minister. They say Jean Charest should step down because he ignored reports several months ago that Johnson might have been using steroids. They were also critical that the minister banned Johnson from Canadian teams for life without a full investigation. And when every test done in the past showed that Ben Johnson did not take steroids, and this minister didn't even talk to Ben Johnson to get his side of the story. The rules are very clear and have been clear for some time now under this government. An athlete caught in a situation of doping is suspended for life from Sport Canada funding and cannot participate in a national team that receives national uh, funding from the national government. Across the country, the mood remains one of shock and stunned disbelief. No one wants to believe that Johnson knowingly cheated. 
Uh, made me feel disappointed to know that Ben Johnson cheated. He should have kno known that they would test him to see if he was, if he was, like, if he was taking it. It was, like, it was his own fault that he took steroids. I was so sad because, like, I really liked him. I looked up to him, and you know, he's a really fast runner. Because I'm into track and field too, so like, I try to run like him because he's a fast runner, and I felt so, so disappointed and everything. Overseas in Seoul, Olympic athletes now find themselves under suspicion in the wake of the Johnson doping scandal. They're saddened and they're angry. Jim Gray reports. We received back Ben's gold medal from him. And we had, at that time, the unfortunate task of removing Ben from the Canadian team. I'm really shocked. I'm totally shocked. I had no idea. Absolutely no idea. I really didn't think that he would do, ever do anything like that. I'm just totally shocked. The news of Ben Johnson spread almost as fast as he had run the race. At first, I didn't want to believe it. And then I felt angry and at him, I guess. And and sad that that has to be a part of the competition. He probably, or maybe, was not doing anything different than some of the other athletes, but maybe he was just more stupid. And I think it's a tragedy for the sport that that sort of thing goes on, and it's a, it's a difficult thing for the athlete. If, if it is going on, then it puts the athlete in the moral dilemma, do you do it to be competitive, or do you not do it and know you're gonna lose? And an athlete shouldn't be in that kind of a moral dilemma. Here's one of the top athletes getting uh, uh, testing positive for a substance that has been banned by the IOC and perhaps that will draw enough attention to the problem that we can eradicate the problem completely. For the Canadian delegation there was a tremendous sense of loss. Well I'm very disappointed because I'm a new Canadian. I came from England two years ago and I've admired um, Ben Johnson or what he's done uh, a lot and he certainly gave the uh, Canadian delegation a, a very big lift when he won last Saturday. I think it's very very sad. For American Calvin Smith, there was mixed emotions. Happy he would now receive the bronze medal. Unhappy that he had been denied his moment in the sun. I'm somewhat sad that on that day that I did run, that I was not able to stand on the stands and get the respect as one of the top sprinters, which um, is what I feel that I, you know, should have gotten that day now. But um, it's just one of those things, and I'm just glad that things have been cleared up now. Jim Gray, NBC Sports. The Johnson case has thrown the whole issue of steroids and performance-enhancing drugs onto the world stage. And joining us now is a man who knows a lot about that topic, Greg Zulak, editor-in-chief of Muscle Mag International. We just watched that report. All these athletes saying, oh, it's too bad. What do you think? Well, when I listen to those people talk, I sort of have to laugh because uh, it's like, you know, let he who's not sin throw the first stone because probably two-thirds of the athletes at Seoul are on some kind of drug. It may not be uh, steroids, but they'll be on uh, beta blockers, or they'll be on uh, diuretics, they'll be on growth hormone, they'll be on amphetamines, barbiturates. So is Johnson's problem that he got caught, not that he was taking steroids? I would say so, because okay. uh, this is a, something that people out there don't understand. Just because you test po uh, negative doesn't mean you weren't on drugs. Right. You may have been on steroids, stopped taking them in, in a, soon enough to, to pass the test, or you may have taken something to beat the test. Okay, well, let's talk about that. This is actually what we're talking about. I don't know what camera we're on here, but I want to take this up and put it in my hand. This is on two, unless you want to take a close-up on three. I don't care. You can hardly see the darn little thing. It's a little pink pill. <coughs> that is a steroid. That that's is, it. That's Winstraw. This brand is Winstraw, and this is what Ben Johnson was taking. That's right. Right? Okay. Now, supposedly, <laughs> how do you hide this? I mean, the, the objective is take the steroids, increase your muscle mass, make yourself strong, but don't get caught. So how do you okay. avoid getting caught? Okay, what, what research has shown in the last couple of years, if you take an, an oral-based injectable drug like decadarabalin, uh, that is very hard for the body to excrete. You can detect that uh, in a test up to 18 months before the test. You can take, right. a, you could take a steroid 18 months ago and fail the drug test today. Yeah which obviously isn't very fair because yeah, the drugs no longer... Yeah, that's not what these guys okay, are doing. these fast-acting orals, like, like uh, Winstrol, supposedly, uh, you can take it up to about two weeks before the, for the, the, the test and still pass. Right. So what the idea is, you, take a, you do a cycle of six or eight weeks, stop two weeks before the test, right. and, and you should pass the test. What's the story about ways to avoid... I mean, we were talking about this before. <laughs> 
might as well discuss this. All right. I mean, um, ways to beat the test. Okay. In, instead of just stopping six weeks before. Okay, well, the weeks most before. common procedure that's not well known is the fact that, and it was, it was actually started by Eastern Black countries, was you take a catheter and you insert it in your bladder and you insert someone else's clean urine in your bladder. So you, you, you walk into the test, 10 minutes before the test, you insert the clean, clean urine, you walk in, you pee, you pee out clean urine and you're, you're home free. And that happens? That happens frequently. How many athletes in this, in the, uh, you, you figure that about 40 to 50, 60 percent, 70 percent of the athletes are using drugs? Uh, at the Olympic Games, definitely at least 70 percent. It, the, the people who shoot guns, they take beta yeah. blocks to slow their heartbeat down. Yeah. I mean, you name it, there's a drug involved in every sport. There was an argument that Ben, somebody may have put something in, in a drink that, that Ben Johnson had before his test. Is it possible? It's, oh, it's definitely possible. There's no doubt about it. But what they were saying last night on TV at the press conference was that the profile from the urine analysis wasn't consistent with that happening. When you what they're looking for are fluctuations in hormone levels. They're not looking for just... Uh, the detection of a steroid. Right. And you don't get that, that, that fluctuation in hormone level from someone slipping you a mission from, for one day. Right. It takes several weeks of steroid use to cause suppression, to cause these hormone levels to fluctuate like that. Right. Is it possible that Ben Johnson, for example, did not know that he was taking steroids? That someone else was giving it to them and right. calling it something else? Now, that's very definite. They, they could have been giving him uh, amino acid capsules and hiding, <laughs> hiding Winstraw right. inside of it. I mean, yeah. sure, I, I, I could buy that. Okay. Thanks very much, Greg. Appreciate the insight into that. No problem. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Richard. Today on national, international, and political stages, his multi-million dollar endorsement contracts began to disappear. The opposition demanded the resignation of the sports minister over the handling of the case. And while all this was going on, Johnson himself was making a sad and chaotic journey home from Seoul. Christine Gaynor was there when he arrived at Toronto's Pearson International Airport. Ben Johnson showed little emotion and said nothing as he made his way through the terminal to a waiting limousine. It was the first time he had been seen by waiting reporters and cameramen. Earlier, his mother and sister had collected their luggage, but Johnson was kept in a separate room. Like her brother later, his sister said nothing about the loss of Johnson's gold medal the steroid incident, or even how the family felt as she waited for a car to take her home. A passenger on the flight with Johnson says he flew from New York to Toronto hidden in the plane's cockpit. But during the flight from Korea, the passenger had a chance to congratulate Johnson, not knowing what had happened. He didn't mention it at all, because I was unaware. I just congratulated him, and he didn't, he didn't say anything. What kind of mood was he in? How was he? Very quiet. And, you know, it was a long flight. We were 10 hours into the flight or so. So I didn't think anything of it and uh, got him to sign an autograph and told him how proud the country was, really. And thinking back, it wasn't the best thing to say, but I didn't know. While Johnson showed no emotion in Toronto, it was a different story in New York this morning. Although he was smiling shyly as he was led to a blue limo, he was later seen crying and sobbing as he arrived at LaGuardia Airport for the flight to Toronto. As Johnson arrived at his Toronto home, reports that he would be retested tomorrow were denied. He will not get another test. Well, if things continue the way they are right now, things are, are rather bleak. But, uh, you know, speaking to Ben and everything else, I hopefully have every reason to believe that, uh, you know, things will improve. Uh, I mean, there's always out of adversity sometimes something good comes out of it. Uh, God knows what good's going to come out of all this. Ironically, the Canadian Track and Field Association was set to put more rigorous testing procedures into effect at the end of this month. That may help keep other athletes clean. It comes a week too late for Ben Johnson. Christine Gaynor, Global News, Toronto. Across the country, young and old and everybody in between struggled today with anger and depression over the public disgrace of Ben Johnson. Joy Melbourne has more on that story. On the weekend, these children learned about victory. Today, they learned about losing, a hard lesson when it involves drugs and the downfall of Canada's hero, Ben Johnson. My daughter was still in bed, and she put her face back down in the pillow as if, I don't want to hear this. And my seven-year-old, he was just sort of incredulous. He, he, he doesn't know what to make of it. But the five-year-old said, I didn't listen because I didn't want to hear it. I want him to win all the time. I think somebody might have put in Barbara because some people think he put it in his water bottle. How do you think Ben Johnson might feel right now? Disappointed. 
And how do you feel now? Disappointed. In homes and in schools, children were crushed. At this junior high school, classes began with a discussion about Johnson, trying to make sense of it all. How many feel that he did it? Someone sabotaged the uh, If he took the drugs, he should be suspended from the Olympics, but not for life. Huh? Okay. And also, you're saying for uh, a year or two years yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. And also, isn't a man innocent until proven guilty? And then when I found this out, I mean, I almost started to cry because it's our country that we're talking about. The reactions range from disbelief to disillusionment. These kids looked up to Johnson. They bet on him, admired him, modeled themselves after him. Now they're ashamed about the man who represented their national pride. Try to run like him, like really fast. So now I don't know what to do, if I should run or not. He was a real leader, but now he's... We don't think of him as a leader no more. While children try to cope with the sense of loss, parents, teachers, and coaches say Ben Johnson has sent one of the strongest but saddest anti-drug message to Canadian children. Maybe this is a lesson to all of us. Hopefully, a lesson to everyone. Don't tamper with your own body. Joy Malvin, Global News, Toronto. In Ottawa, there were calls for a federal inquiry into the Johnson affair and demands for the resignation of Sports Minister Jean Charest. Ottawa Bureau Chief Doug Small has that part of the story. It's brought the country down, put it in an unpleasant mood. But the Prime Minister says the Ben Johnson affair hasn't affected his thinking about an anticipated election later this fall. I think there's a mood of sadness. Pending an appeal, the Mulroney government has suspended Johnson from Olympic competitions for life. His federal support money has been cut off. The government says it backs the Olympic sanctions that have also been imposed on him. In Montreal, the Liberal leader, John Turner, says he wants to talk to Ben first before condemning him. I, uh, you know, but at the back of my mind, I, um, I still like to hear from Ben. In the Commons, opposition MPs say all the sanctions may be premature. They called for the minister's resignation. So there were a number of ways that Ben Johnson could have been framed. Outside the House, the federal sports minister deflected calls for an immediate inquiry. We'll wait first until the games are over. In the present context, I don't feel that the, the atmosphere is, 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 uh, lends itself to, to launching into that. The sports minister said Johnson has been tested for drugs and found free of them at least eight times in the past two years, most recently at this meet in Zurich, Switzerland, in August. And the sanctions against Johnson will be lifted should any appeal by the sprinter succeed, and he promised to boost the $600,000 already being spent each year to fight drug use in sport. The very fundamental issue that we're fighting against is the values around athletes that use testing, use dope, and why they do it, and the fact that there should be world random testing without prior notice. That's what's in the charter. That's what we would like to implement. The sports minister says the exact circumstances surrounding this sad affair may never be known. He says he has no plans to speak to Johnson himself, but he urges Canadians to rally round the sprinter who will pay a heavy price whether he's eventually exonerated or not. Doug Small, Global News, Ottawa. Experts have been warning about steroids and athletes for at least 10 years, but it's taken the Johnson case to make steroids an everyday word. Leslie Jones has more. In lane four. It's not only elite athletes using steroids, but university football players, bodybuilders, even businessmen who take them to boost their confidence. <laughs> and they're easy to find, just a gymnasium away. You know, they'll come around the gym and ask you if you know if anyone that sells the stuff, right? And mainly what I do, I don't take them to the contact. You know, I ask them a few questions, see if they're cop or anything like that, and then, you know, they go through me, but they don't see the guy that I'm going to for a thing. This Toronto bodybuilder says steroids are easily available on the black market. Half come from doctor's prescriptions. I've heard of stories where uh, athletes are lined up outside uh, with uh, part of their derriere exposed, ready for the needle. Dr. Mario Di Pasquale, a former powerlifter, has written five books on drug use in amateur sports. Despite International Olympic Committee denials, he says up to 95% of athletes are using drugs. <laughs> Steroids are used to build muscle bulk and reduce the time athletes need to rest between workouts. But there are enormous risks. 
liver and kidney damage, infertility or impotence, increased aggression triggering violent and uncontrollable behavior. If someone cut me off in the car, I would chase them three blocks down the road just to pull them out of their car and, and give them a beating. And whoever stood in, the, in, in my way would be bulldozed and run over. Steroids have been cited as factors in U.S. murder and arson cases. Richie, the Toronto bodybuilder, knows the risks. He's experienced the mood swings and the aggression. Yeah, I worry about it a bit, but, you know, I want to be a bodybuilder and stuff like that, so, you know, I guess later on I'll just have to pay my dues, you know? <laughs> to a non-athlete, the risks may appear prohibitive. But for the athlete, where winning is everything, the choice is not so simple. Increased performance means money, it means power, it means fame and fortune and recognition. And so, yes, it's worth it for most athletes. Leslie Jones joins us now to talk a bit more about the steroids. Now, how easy is it to find anybody to talk about steroids? We have several people there. Well, Salia, they don't want to talk openly about it because there is still a stigma attached to taking steroids, but everybody's doing it. The Toronto bodybuilder I talked to said 95% of bodybuilders are, in fact, taking it. And the drugs are easily accessible on any street corner. They know where to get it. There's a big black market out there. And, in fact, one Toronto doctor apparently um, prescribes them uh, as... as as soon as you walk in the office, all you have to do is ask. He doesn't give you a physical. He doesn't check your, your blood to make sure that these steroids are okay. You ask and you get. Would it be only one doctor? You're saying you could find the drugs on the streets, but you can also go to a doctor. If I were an athlete and I chose a new doctor and said, could I have some steroids, what are my chances? Well, pretty good from what I hear. Uh, I guess you ha there's a network of contacts out there. You'd have to know who to go to. These bodybuilders know which doctors will prescribe them. Um, some will prescribe them a lot easier than others, though. And maybe no checkup at all, as you said? If some, no checkup. You ask, and you'll get the steroids. Now, is it really illegal to distribute the steroids? Well, steroids in themselves are not illegal. Um, the ones sold on the black market are. They're brought in illegally from Europe or Mexico, um, but prescribing steroids is not illegal. Okay, thanks very much, Leslie. Okay. Richard? Okay. I won the blows came. A Finnish dairy company withdrew a milk commercial featuring Ben Johnson. A Japanese oil company took ads featuring Johnson off the air. A Japanese news agency claimed the giant Mazda car company is dropping its association with Johnson. An Italian sportswear company is considering terminating its contract with the runner. Here in Canada, companies connected with Johnson were doing damage control. However, most were refusing to appear on camera, given their sensitivity about the expensive linking of their products and Johnson's name. Electronics giant Toshiba of Canada had a contract with Johnson thought to be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yesterday, it published a congratulatory ad in the Globe and Mail. Another appears in this week's Maclean's magazine. Today, Toshiba issued a statement saying all advertising involving Johnson will be suspended. However, a small Guelph-based beverage company is taking a different tack. They've just launched a new product line endorsed by Johnson. It became available last week in hundreds of Ontario convenience stores. They say they're going to give Johnson a chance. Well, in the first place, uh, we're very saddened by what happened. And uh, however, as far as we're concerned, we're going to take a wait-and-see attitude. When we talk to Ben and hear his story, then we'll make a decision after that. But until we hear from Ben, uh, everything's on hold. Meanwhile, the author of a book on how companies can deal with a public relations crisis says some good could come from the Johnson story. Sponsors of, of Ben Johnson and others could do the sports world and, and us all a big service to take that money that was going to be marketed around the success and put it somehow into ridding sports of drugs internationally. John Darby, Global News, Toronto.